All right. Yep, that's it. Hello, this is Doug Lindauer, and we're ready for our second episode of Notes to Strike a Chord. I am sorry that I am an hour late, but this is a special stream tonight. This is the uh, three hours of sleep in 48 hours and only two meals and all that time stream. Uh, had a rough couple of nights. Hey, Sir Smash. Yeah, had a rough couple of nights and whatnot, but I I, I really want to do this project, so I figured I better get off my butt and get online. And tonight we are going to cover. Was it yesterday we covered my main, or not yesterday? Last week covered my main Glendower. Very much a long-term character. Very much a huge backstory. Very much very serious. Very role play. Very. I mean, the character, I, I, I created basically the template of Glendower all the way back in 94, so. Today we're going to go with a delightful accident. I, I am on my half work. Her name is Alcrat. And, yeah. She started out as, well, it wasn't necessarily a joke. I was trying to go, I'm going to be playing playing games. So I was trying to build a stick fighter. Um, I had this idea that 10 fighter and 10 rogue would be like the best stick fighter. I have no idea why I thought this. In retrospect, maybe it wasn't the most brilliant of ideas. In hindsight, you know. But I thought, well, you know, I could get all the synergies. I get all the extra feet. Yeah, I got to level 8 before I quickly realized that the damage was never going to come. Yeah. The, the 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 damage wasn't there and all the fighter levels were kind of being tamped down by rogue. I mean it just wasn't going anywhere. I got her level 8 at 4 fighter and 4 rogue. Uh, by the way, those are the same levels she has today. She has 4 fighter and 4 rogue. But I quickly decided that was never going to feed the bulldog. Uh, I was thinking, well, do I finish out rogue and or do I finish out fighter? And I was like, well... I don't need all those feats for fighter. I'd rather get something else. Maybe an enhancement tree that would do more damage. And then Rogue, I was thinking, well, you know, I'm really trying to build. Somebody's going to be doing weapons. Then I pulled this armor, which I turned into an overlay. The Kenneth armor with gear overlay. And I put it on her. And she was already carrying the spear-like stick. And I realized that there was only one thing I could really truly do. No fighter. No rogue. Twelve barbarian. Hey, she was already a half-orc. Come on. Barbarian was probably going to be the way this was going to end anyway. Now, her name is an homage. Truly it is. Um, all cred is Thurkla spelled backwards. And if you don't know who Thurkla is, it's kind of a deep cut. But she was the half-orc ninja... That was featured in a prominent storyline in the online webcomic Order of the Stick. And I don't usually name my characters after other people's creations. But that, well, 
that, among almost every other storyline in the comic, was so good that I really felt like I had to, you know, I really didn't want to play, I really didn't have an idea of a half work anyway, so, uh, yeah, I cribbed it. I'm going to fully admit it. I've got no shame about it either. I thought it was just a, you know, it was just an absolute tragic story. Um, she does, get, in the end, kind of get fridged because they need to advance Elon's storyline. And I do feel bad about that, but... Let's just say that... At least she got character development, you know? I mean, a lot of the times it's just like, yeah, the girls show up and it's all like, oh, she means a lot of this person. Die. No, we got a lot out of Thurklin. Really, she was going to get a, a tragic backstory. We, we just knew it was coming. I mean, how else do you think that was going to end? Sunshine and rainbows? No. Uh, I rolled up a custom hair dye, uh, custom hairstyle and applied it to her. It's the wavy lock one. Uh, Chernago actually feel that for a long time. Apply it to her. She's got the deep red. I think it's burgundy. I think that was just her natural hair color. It's one you can pick, I believe. I want her to be the fiery redhead. I don't know why. I, I just thought, well, I guess I did. I, I, you know, she's got a slight green tinge. I was going for the whole green and red thing. Highlight the door. So she's got pretty decent rogue skills, but strength is her main stat. So it's not like she's got super uber ones she does need a little bit of heroism to get through the hidden door in uh bluto's hidden door in uh, white plume mountain that's really her only stopping point never really had much much other problems I'm trying to think if there were Uh, 12, uh, 12 Barbarian gives her really, really, really good hit points. I mean, look at that, 2205. Really, I only have one more character that has more hit points. That's 2700 on Zathras. Uh, but Zathras is a dwarf, throw your weight around 20 Barbarian, so. And he will be covered at a later date. He's my other, he's my, my, my pure Barbarian. I try to have that. As soon as we get out of here, we'll take a look at her stats and skills. Oh. This giant spider was not dropping. It's but they replaced the black widows with corrupt giant spiders. I got tune in Saturday on Bard Life where I'm gonna get severely salty on on new catacombs. Um, new Delira, awesome job, but new catacombs, oh, I'm, yeah. Alright, her stats, well, we've got all my gear on, and I'm using my standard gear, we went over it last time, go check the VOD out if you, if you want to see that, I've got to move that over to, to YouTube though. 
Uh, she doesn't have a whole lot in the way of tomes. She doesn't even have a dex tome. I'll have to fix that. Uh, four con, two strength, three int. Almost everybody has a three int from this era. Three wisdom. I might use my last plus three with Tome on her. And then Charisma, no Charisma. So no Charisma, no deck. She really doesn't need them. Um, I, I don't know why she doesn't have the Dex Tome. I usually apply the Dex Tome. But really, uh, I would like to get her a better Strength Tome. And since she's not a Dwarf, this, this should be higher. I would like to get her, like, you know, well, if I could find it, you know, obviously anything, anything over plus two would be great, but I'd love to get her a plus eight eventually. Her primary skills are the rogue skills, 23 in almost uh, all of them, except for open lock. I did have to cut that back. Uh, she only has eight ranks to jump. But with you know with her strength, that's not that big of a deal. I was gonna get I was gonna get the jumps. She's gonna jump jump. And that's pretty much it. I didn't even UMD her and I well I couldn't. I just didn't have that. I would if I If I ever got a massive plus seven int tome for her, I would definitely uh, lesser reincarnate her. So as so to get UMD. She would need two because the rogue skills would allow her to max it out. She was so she would need two points for both the point fives during her fighter and barbarian levels. Feats. What are her feats? Epic feats. Uh, blinding speed. Overwhelming critical. Perfect two-handed fighting. This is standard for any you know, stick or greatsword build or maul build. Um, two-handed fighting chain. Took mobility and dodge, but not spring attack. Didn't have enough for a spring attack. Cleave and great cleave. Power critical. Weapon focus. Bludgeoning, because she was going to be a stick fighter. Uh, I have lay on hands because I'm probably in a destiny that uses it. Or I've twisted it. Yeah, and yielding sentinel. So she's strictly an Eberron creation. So, you know, I've been kind of coming up with backstory, you know, trying to come up with backstory for her. Uh, basically, it boils down to, you know, barbarian, stick fighting, half orc, wild Zendric. I decided to make her from Zendric. You know. I'm still trying to figure out exactly about all of her, her true backstory and whatnot. I know I don't want it to be... I, I, I would prefer the tragic backstory from... Or the stick where her, her parents were just really, really odd. Um, so, you know, but it makes sense. Hey, Cleebeard. Welcome. That being said, after I started adding the Barbarian levels, she really became super fun to play. She quickly became one of my go-to tunes. 
surpassing a lot of earlier tunes. Uh, I'm not kidding. I I she she jumped the queue. <laughs> You quickly become a frontline character. And a large, uh, Part of that is really because she's, you know, not only a good rogue and a good fighter and a good barbarian, is she just... The weird thing is, is I came to realize that, you know, if I had trouble with a melee character and I could still do it, 12 barbarian fixes a lot of sense. Hello, Fargonaut. So her build is still, you know, I could probably go back and tweak it a little bit more. I mean, obviously because the first eight levels I was building her to be this ten fighter, ten rogue thing. And I built her along that and then I added twelve barbarian. And in all honesty, there's not a whole lot of hurts, but obviously I'd probably want strength to be a little bit more important than constitution. I was taking constitution a lot because... Uh, the fact that I was taking rogue levels and I, I thought 10 rogue levels is going to hurt. I'm going to need, you know, I'm going to need buff up the con. Yeah, that didn't pan out, though. So a lot of her backstory is now being filled in basically by just, you know, the adventures within DDL. I'm not... She's never existed, unlike Glendower, she's never existed in anything outside of DDO. So she kind of springs straight from the story of Dungeons and Dragons Online. Um, I moved her up to the main 12, so if I write stories, she's in the raid party. She's not in the main 6. She's not in the top 6, but she's definitely in the top 12. So she's definitely a part of my main storyline in my head. All right, we are going to take a quick moment, and I am, since I do have several viewers now, I am going to go ahead and open up. The giveaway. All right, so once again tonight I'll be giving away 10,000 plat and an item out of Ziggy Star's giveaway inventory. Now, if I can get 10 subs or 40 more followers, I will add an EE Ring of Shadows to that list. So if you have the means, I certainly would appreciate at least a follow. And I would love a sub. Um, I don't need to do the optionals. I'm not doing this for points. What am I doing? So we'll go ahead and go look for the survivor. Now, she is really hyper-focused to bludgeoning, so anything that's resistant to bludgeoning, she's not going to be the best on. Oh, he's going to go down there to get the other treasure chest, because these are now wor worthy treasure chests. These are 23 gear. What am I doing?
So when I was going through, I realized that she was uh, pretty solid in Rage. She did really well in um, Caught in the Web. I think she was 24 when she did Caught in the Web. Uh, Fall of Truth, not really your strong point. She's got the damage, but she doesn't have the AC to tank. She's a mass melee, so she really is not a great kiter. I obviously went rogue skills, so she obviously doesn't have a whole lot of um, intim, so it was really hard for me to keep dragons, so... Uh, she did fine on Temple of Deathworm. I've never run Fire on Thunder Peaks with her, though. Individual quests. Most of them she did really, really well on. I'm trying to think of any ones where I thought that she probably could use some trouble. But the great thing about her is that she does have... Uh, decent AOE with her cleaves. And the Barbarian. Oh, we gotta go over uh, enhancements and stuff. Blur. Had a preference to fly. So usually when I build barbarians, I know a lot of people don't, but I like a cult slayer for its defensive things like knockdown and, and whatnot, and the guarding bond and vampiric bond. Oh, I love that, especially with my crafted weapons. We're gonna have to get to that here soon, but. Sorry, I needed to get a drink. Obviously, splash some Kensai and Thief Acrobat. Four levels of it because, you know, that's what I had, right? I didn't go all the way up because I didn't have the... I didn't put the... Stop putting the feats in. Uh, yeah, I didn't pay, put anything else in. Just core the Half-Orc, Strength and Fury. Epic Destinies, I, I liked her so much, I maxed out all of her Epic Destinies. I like a lot of uh, tunes. I keep her in Unyielding Sentinel for the HP boost. And it saves me a twist by having Brace for Impact. Matter of fact, I don't even, I, I gotta reset this because I've gotta add, I could add so much more to it. I didn't even realize that. With a rifle in the tank. So I'll probably add, um,. The other one, the Momentum Swing, have so many attacks. And I think that's, that's her probably her biggest strength, is that she has all the attacks. I'm seldom just doing, you know, when I'm, like, concentrating, I'm seldom doing just plus one, or just weapon die. I'm always adding anywhere from one to five. I think that really makes her a really, really good tune. I'm not too sure what I was thinking. It wasn't locked. Only the locked ones are. This one is this one and the second door.
Or do I have that backwards? Uh, all of our attacks, I, I mean, I obviously didn't have the epic ones, but I had the rogue and, and the cleaves and whatnot. And that really helped her. She really had a pretty easy beat down in the Veil of Twilight for, oh, what was it? Ritual Sacrifice. She probably was the easiest tune I've ever had to go through Ritual Sacrifice. And Cold Chamber wasn't bad with her either. Because most of the cold chambers, like when they swarm, they're right in those closed areas. So her sweeps were really, really, really good. Uh, yeah, in uh, the Maybar Festival, the cold chamber one, she both cold chamber ones, she was really, really good in actually. But when we complete this, we will talk about. The claim to fame. Now, right now, you have to, just so everybody knows, they announced it today, you have to walk all the way back to Gerard Dryden. They had to temporarily remove the advancement guy from there, which is too bad because I really liked him. Uh, a mechanic I, I recognize from, say, like, um, Service of the Overlord in Dispenser of Shadows. I wonder what went wrong. No green. We're looking for green. Always looking for green. Oh. Oh, good. Just advance it when you walk away. All right. So, God, I can't, I can't believe it's been that long. Um, here, I'm going to quickly look this up really quick. i got to go to a different instance of Twitch. You know, be, bear with me really quick. It was my first club. Man, it has been two years ago. Oh, Lord. I'm trying to see if I can figure out how to get a... I would love to just copy this, but I can't. But it was on DDO stream, so. All right. Here we go. All right, so. Let's see if I can really quickly do something with this. I'll just do this. All right. That's the clip of her claim to fame where me and my buddy got into a uh, halls of, uh, Haunted Halls of Evening Star run. And my friend is not very good. This is two years ago now. And all, and I, the hirelings died, my buddy died, and all I had was Rejuvenation Cocoon, and if I tried to melee everything, I would just take too much damage. 
And so I knew I had a range to dragon, but she's not she's not a range tune and I never planned for her, but she pulled an Andamantine dagger and it wasn't very good. It was wholly of like I don't think it was anything good. Maybe it was Heartseeker? I don't think so. I think it was something like Diversion or something. It was literally, and that's the reason why it's named that, it was literally a trash dagger. It was just random loot. I was surprised it was both animating with a red augment slot. Um, and so I took out this level 15. We're running, we're running haunted halls. We're running, you know, it's an, you know, an epic quest. And I pull out this level 15 dagger and then spend probably 30 minutes plinking at the black dragon with it until as you can see in that clip it dies and that became the legend of all crit and her trash dagger now as much as i'm a sentimental person trash dagger would be nice fine all right i could keep it bring it out once in a while but it wouldn't be useful It'd just be one more thing that i was carrying around However, it was an animantine dagger with a red augment slot. This this is one of those things that's a crafter's dream. And I did craft and a little help from the master crafter, Oriara, to get a level 34. Uh, what do you call it? A little level 34 add-on to it. We deconstructed trash dagger. And turned it into a plus 13 Holy 7 Adamantine Returning Throwing Dagger of Piercing 7 with a Kinetic Ruby Eye. With Vampirism. Trash Dagger ain't so trashy anymore, but we do call this is the original Trash Dagger. And I do kind of build all my daggers that way now. In honor of the trash, because you know the first one was holy. That I knew, knew that, and so one of the legends is not only the fact that she carries the spear type. I even glamoured it, so because right now she's got moonbeam, which is which is a fine looking staff. This too would work. A lot of staffs are not great looking. Some are plain, like Elemental Bloom. Kind of looks like, I don't know, you know, with the, with the bloom is so high on here. In all honesty, it looks like you've got a giant holder for an ear of corn. Uh, Thunderforged. I don't like the bell end. And I haven't even looked at the legendary Echo of Wave, but it's definitely a, yeah, kind of a trident looking thing. I knew it was going to have a big head on it because it's a spell casting instrument. <laughs> They're too long. Why go to extremes? But the you know it's not just that when she has to range, it is trash dagger time. It is the only one I carry. I got lucky too. It's a pretty good looking, a pretty good looking dagger. In all honesty. It's one of the bigger ones, and it's even bigger because she's a half orc. So, and I just for funsies, I did do redo temple or not temple, but uh, Hot Halls of Evening Star with new and improved trash dagger. Let me say that the uh, uh, Black Dragon liked this version a hell of a lot less than the original trash dagger. She went down smooth and finished clean.
Uh, yeah. He's almost got it maxed out. Morning Lord. I don't even remember what the Morning Lord one looks like. Oh, that doesn't look too bad. Still, it's not as it's it's not as barbarian as Crystal Spear here, and yeah, that's what I really, really wanted. So this character came on because of a happy accident of literally throwing. 12 Barbarian onto a broken build and finding just the right armor to figure out how to make her look. And in all honesty, Alcrat is one of the more enjoyable tunes for me to play, especially when I'm playing by myself. Um, problem with Glendower and, uh, and say Alice Thane is that they are definitely support characters. They're there to help people out. Uh, Alcret is definitely one of the f first, well, part of my third generation of builds. Now, my first generation of builds were basically level 20s to cap, trying to just build, you know, straight 20 cleric, 20 bard. And then we get into a couple of spite builds. I can do it better than you can. We'll get into that later when we get to to the Zigster next week. And then the third generation was me really getting down and experimenting. And it started out with Fongate. Uh, when Fongate had their traditional, when they when they were doing the uh, the forum post things for Christmas, and I wrote a couple of. DDO Christmas carols and one auto and auto stone heroic auto stone and created a level 20 character that turned into the hurricane machine build Charwant Perianth. So I'll probably get to her in, in two weeks. But definitely part of that third really experimental series. I mean, obviously, this started out as an experiment. And it was it was part of that era, and, and now I'm just kind of comfortable with builds, so I kind of just do whatever I want. <laughs> Anything with a DC, I kind of like to go pure, obviously. But for combat, there's no real reason not to have gone. You know, her base attack bonus goes up pretty well because of the big strength mod. I mean, I have the right gear for it. She got really decent fortification. I don't have to worry about fort. Barbarian resistances and whatnot. I got him up to 51. You get him up to 56. Okay, so that's... uh. That's weird. I should have gotten 10. Why do I have... Some of those fives must be enhancement bonuses. But I have a Draconic Soul Gem on the gear. I think it's in the boot. Nope. Ah, it's in the Rose Court Sigil Stone. That makes sense. Ant is the one few of the few things that almost all my tunes need. Uh, I've done some some favor runs. She's done a lot. Obviously I have to do keep on the borderlands. 
yeah, this is going to be hard, especially the blasting ones. I've got to bring up an uh, artificer over on the other account to help her with that. Probably burn through invaders pretty quick. Yeah, the fur. Okay, this one right here, right here. Zwabi's Revenge. She's ran it twice. And the first time, she was useless because she had no way to hit um, Laylat all the way over on the thing. She had no range. At the time, I hadn't even pulled Trash Dagger yet, but the second time, she had Trash Dagger 2.0. And Laylat doesn't like that dagger any more than anybody else does. All right, well, I think that's all I wanted to say about Allcrat, and I have had a long day. So I think I'm going to go ahead and call it here. Um, we're going to go ahead and switch over first, though, to Ziggy Stardust. So if you'd like to enter the drawing for a th uh, 10,000 plat and... Uh, an item off of Ziggy Stardust's list, please enter the enter the please enter the uh giveaway by entering exclamation ddo we're not quite done yet cleave beard we do have to give the giveaway and i do have to switch to ziggy for that so but the information portion is done so there we go to ziggy is giving everything away Woo! All right, well then go get your dinner on. I know how that felt. I had I had not I had had like one meal in the last what? Yeah, I just ate. So I've had two meals in the last forty eight hours. It's been pretty thin. Oh, it's raining. All right, here we are. There's a list of what we have for giveaways for Ziggy Stardust. We have Embrace of the Spider Queen, Devotion, and I, this is rare. Being a bit of a bit, I, 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 I hoard these, but I'm going to give away an Iron Weave Tunic. The level six one, you'll never, ever get my level fours. You ain't never going to get it. My foes never gonna get it. Uh, an EE -E leaves the forest. Grave wrappings. A great bro of the scrag. Ironwood Kopesh EE -E or H E. You know, an EE. -E. Uh, e Dream Visor. And the rest of these were last week, so you can pretty much see what they are. They're all heroic elite. And then I still have a portable hole to give away. So. I've given everybody enough time, so let's go ahead and get Fargonaut his, his, his winnings, I guess. Because I'll just do this. Let's go to the giveaway. Fargonaut's the only one to enter. Close giveaway. Pick winner. It's Fargonaut. Wow. Fargonaut, what do you want? And what tune do you want me to send it to? Probably, I don't know if it's already, yeah. Well, I've already switched characters, so it's probably that Devald guy. I don't remember how. Whisper? H4? What did you want? I don't don't know which one's the whisper. I don't have a whisper.
Nope. No, I don't have any EE or Hero. I don't have any Whisper Chains to give away. I have an Iron Weave Tunic. I don't give. I don't give away Iron Weave Tunics, and I use, usually don't give away Iron Weave Tunics, and I don't use. I don't give away Whisper Chains. Really, I. I need them. I would love to have an extra Whisper Chain to give away, but I do not have one right now. I have a Leaves of the Forest. EE -E Leaves. Not a Whisper Chain. I know Whisper Chain's so good. It's like a Ring of Shadows in convenient armor form, but yeah, I don't have an extra one right now. I, I really, really don't. Hurrah, Scorpion. Thrillian Warblade, Aguilan's Blade, Tenarius Stiletto. Jeweled Cloak, Shamanic Fetish, Two Dream Visors, Intricate Field Optics, A Mountain's Fist, Ironwood Kopesh. Shit, I really like Kopeshes. It's a great Kopesh, but Grave Wrappings. Embrace of the Spider Queen. Devotion. Mm -hmm. All right. Now I know somebody wants a Whisper Chain. Maybe I'll go grind one out. Sometimes we just go out and just try to get get them. Oh, I was playing Alpha Scent. There you go. And with that, that brings North Strike Core to an end. Remember, next week, we will not be leaving this character. Next week, we will be covering the history of Ziggy Star in Eberron. Ziggy Star is one of those names where, you know, not only do I not usually name them after people, but I had to do this one. And I will tell you the wonderful, wonderful story of how I managed to complete the jo joke, even though I really thought it never would happen. So with that, I wish everybody peace and good questing, and we'll see you next week for Notes to Strike a Chord. Have a great night.